Hello everyone, my name is Kreti Kopani and in this video we're going to learn about CSS Grid, what CSS Grid really is, how we can use it and we're going to go through all the syntax of CSS Grid. We can compare CSS Grid to Flexbox. Flexbox is a way to lay out things in one dimension so that they are flexible and change size dynamically. And Grid is exactly the same. It allows you to lay out things flexibly and dynamically but different from Flexbox, um, CSS Grid allows you to do all those things, but not in one dimension, but in two dimensions. And you can also call it um, Flexbox, but in two dimensions. So this is the HTML. And then to get started with creating the grid, we need just to go here in CSS and in grid container, we need to write uh, to use display property. And then we are going to write grid. We can see that nothing changes. And that is because grid doesn't define any rows or columns for us to work with. So by default, it just looks the same. What we need to do to make grid become an actual grid, it is to find a specific column or row to work with. So to do this, if we want to define columns, we use grid template columns properties. And then uh, we can put any size that we want. Um, for example, I'm going to going to put this uh, 200 pixels on the first column and 100 pixel on the second column. And as you can see, the first column is 200 pixels and the, the second column is uh, 100 pixels. But if we want um, our columns to size itself based on the items inside of them, we use fraction unit. Um, for example, we put the first column on um, one fraction and the second column on two fraction. And then we can see that the first column, uh, the second column is twice as big as the first column. And that is because the fraction unit here in CSS Grid works the same as the flex grow on uh, flex box. So if we want three of the columns to be 150 pixels, we don't need to write 150 pixels three times, but we just need to use repeat command. And here, firstly, we need to write how many times we want, uh, how many times we want to repeat, for example, three. And here we need to write the size of the column we want, 150 pixels. And as you can see, three columns here are 150 pixels and the one item is uh, wrapped down because we didn't write it here on repeat. If we write here 4, we see that the 4th are um, 150 pixels. The same thing uh, happens with rows. So again for rows we use grid template rows properties. And uh, for example, we want the first row to be 300 pixels and the second row to be 150 pixels. And as you can see, the first row is 300 pixels and the other row is um, 150 pixels. But if we want to make it easy, we just write grid auto rows. And uh, we just write here 200 pixels. We can see that all the rows are going to be 200 pixels. But we can also override it by using, again, grid template rows. And uh, we want the first row to be 300 pixels. And it only changes the first row and the second row uh, stays the same, 200 pixels. 
So if we want our items to have a minimum of 200 pixels for example and we want them to grow depending on the content we give them we use min max on grid auto rows. Um, f here firstly we give them the minimum of 200 pixels and uh, next we give them the maximum where maximum is going to be auto because uh, as I said we want them to be to grow depending on the content we give them and now they they are uh, all 200 pixels because they don't have any content but if we give them content as you see the item one uh, and item two grow depending on that on their content um, the item 2 grows to fill the amount of item 1 and item 3 and 4 um, that don't have any content are both 200 pixels. So let's say that you want uh, the items to have their own space, their own place and you want them to have some gap between them. The property we're now uh, gonna learn will help us with this. Um, this property is uh, grid gap for the rows is grid row gap and let's say we want them to have uh, like 20 pixel gap and for the columns will be the exact same property but instead of rows we're gonna we're gonna just write columns and we want them to have uh, 25 percent uh, 25 pixels uh, gap and as you can see the gap between the columns and the rows but if uh, we want to have the same gap for the rows and for columns we just use uh, grid gap and let's just let it 20 pixels and it is 20 pixels uh, gap between the columns and 20 pixels gap between the uh, the rows so another way to lay out columns and rows is by using grid column or row start grid column or row and properties but before we use them I'm just gonna show you how columns um, work in grid so the first column is here and the second column is here and for the third column is in the end of the browser here the same thing happens with rows the first row here the second row here and the third row on the bottom here so uh, now we're just going to use the properties grid column start and let's say we want to start from one and we want to end it at column three. Here you go. The grid item one starts here in the column one and ends in the column three. Also three, we can just um, name it minus one. It's the same thing. After that, we can do the same thing for the rows. Here in item two, we can just um, place it grid row, grid row start. And start it by two and grid row end. And it at four, that row four. I'm just going to do the same thing on grid item three. And here you go. Uh, grid item two and grid item three start at row two, which is here and end at row four, which is here. This is useful to lay out things in order that the items expand differently on the browser. For these properties, we can also use span to show how much size the items can take. We need just to write grid column and then span two. 
we have to do the same thing for the grid start, for the grid row, sorry. And now, as you can see, it doesn't change anything because uh, grid row with span and grid column with span is the same thing as what we did um, before. Because grid column span 2 actually means that the item will take up to two columns. And the same thing happens with grid row where the item will take up to two rows. Some of you may ask how we can align our grid container or grid items inside of the container. And the answer is by using align items and justify items and align, align content and justify content properties that are similar to Flexbox. So let's just firstly use justify content properties. Let's say we want uh, to center our items. And as you can see, this they are centered on the center of the browser. When we uh, make the browser bigger, we can also um, make them start from the top and uh, make them start at the bottom, at the end of the browser. And let's just use um, the default here, which is stretch. And now let's use align align content property. Um, let's say we want them to we want our items to center, but because the align content centers them vertically, to make it more visible, we're just gonna add some height. Let's say a hundred view height. And they are centered um, vertically and we can center them in the center of the browser here. We can also use justify items and align items. Let's say we want them centered in the column. They are centered on their columns and let's say we want them centered on their rows they are also centered on their rows and uh, we can also make it start from the top and start from the top again we can do all sorts of things but uh, the default is stretch for both and they are now like we didn't do anything to them all of this can be overridden on grid items and for example we want item one to be um, centered vertically and with this will help us the property align self and we just write here center now only the item one will be centered vertically and if we want to center it also um, horizontally we use justify justify self center and now the item one will be centered uh, horizontally and vertically and all the other items will be stretched uh, by justify item here and align item on um, the container. So align self and justify self is the same as in Flexbox and um, we can do the same thing as we did in the grid item one we can do on the other items down below. So this is all about CSS Grid. I hope you enjoyed the video. For any questions, please um, write on the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video, please give us a like down below. Thank you and goodbye.